Okay, so our cache finished. So let's have a look. Let's do it with our visualizer, I guess. So let's scrub through it. Let's maybe do a playlist or something. So I guess let's go to smooth shaded so we don't have the bounty box. And let's do something like this. Hold this button so you can uh, pull out the bar. Hold this button. Let's do it until frame 175. And I guess let's place, press start, see what it looks like. Take a while to start up and play, as always. So you see, like our pyro still sort of looks like we'd expect with the rebuilding and all. Of course, we could change the visualization settings, but. All right, so now we're going to be, and uh, there's something there that looks a little bit weird. So we're going to investigate what's up with that, because it shouldn't do this thing that it does here. So we need to investigate what's up with that. But apart from that, uh, it works. You do see um, what you got over here at the end. I'm gonna just cancel the flipbook. So what you do see here in the end, you see a lot of flickering and other stuff. That's because right now we're doing a super low resolution flip simulation and pyro simulation. So this is where like at the end, we will do a super high resolution with more oversampling and just more points. Like I said, I think my final flip sim had about 80 million uh, points, which is really what you need to get a sort of stable result here without a lot of flickering. Because remember, uh, like if we just have a look at our points, let me just go through it. Remember, we're re building this based on a point cloud. And right now there are a lot of gaps between uh, certain stuff. So if you were to rebuild like some part over here, like we have one point here, it's going to be quite hard to like properly rebuild as you can see a great get big gaps between there. So that's why you kind of need uh, a lot higher resolution sim. Mm, I am going to investigate what's up with the sudden switch there. I think so. Let's look. Let's look through it. Uh, so right, let's check frame fifty. It's gonna be this thing. So um, nine eight points. One. So that's also the case. Then let's say frame fifty one. Okay. So. Okay, I think I figured out what the problem is. I think what's happening is we used a too low resolution settings for our flip sim. So what it's doing is it's, uh, and then it's receding it. So it's receding it with far less points than what we bring into there. So from frame 50, it's loading in 2 million points. And then because of the lower resolution, it basically uh, divides it by four. So that's what that issue is with. And then of course, when we're rebuilding it, uh, we don't have enough points to, to do that entire thing. So uh, let's go in here. So we used 0 .0, 0, so 0 0.1 here. Um, yeah, okay, so that kind of makes sense because uh, I guess if we were previewing at a sort of lower resolution PyroSim, we're using 0 0.028 here. And then over here, we were using 0 0.1. So that would kind of explain the, uh, the difference. So just to test this out, because it's gonna be super slow to 
kind of do a uh, to do this properly. Mm, maybe let's do a lower resolution piracy. Uh, I kind of okay. I'm gonna do a uh, like I'm gonna simulate the the flip. I'm not gonna do the entire sequence because it's gonna be slow. But just to check if the transition works smoothly, I'm gonna do a higher resolution sim. So let's copy this parameter. Go into flip simulation, paste relative references. And something I missed by the way on these Falcons, you on, uh, when you're using uh, tops, um, then you have an option to delete the results from disk. I really wish they would add that also on the file caches because that would be super nice. Because now if I want to delete this file cache, I would need to navigate to this folder um, to in order to do that. But anyway, diverging from the topic a little bit. So I guess let's just do a couple of frames because it's, it's going to be a lot slower. I'm just going to cache from 50 to uh, 65. Then I'm going to rebuild those frames and I'm going to see what that looks like. Then I don't have to run this entire scene for this test uh, because we already verified that the rebuilding itself does work. It looks quite cool. Just need to fix this issue over here where it sort of sweet. And, it, and again, this is why you do something like this in a just a simple test scene because if you're going to run into these issues in your production scene where you're going to do super high resolution sims, uh, it's it's going to be much harder to, to identify these issues because you have a lot of more stuff to deal with. So yeah, I'm going to press save to disk and then I'm going to get back when everything is done. So again, that's this part and this part. So let's press save to disk and I'll be right back. All right, so we're back and if we look at our flip simulation here, which is gonna start at frame 50, 2 million points, 5 million points. So we probably overdid it with the resolution and the, uh, because we're also after receding, remember? But uh, that's already looking better. So if we look then down here, the volume, you see here yeah, right now we are getting quite good quality. So, you see right now there's no problem in the transition phase. Actually, has a very smooth transition. So again, I didn't do the entire simulation, but let's just flip book a couple of frames from frame 40 to 65. So then we can just view the transition. I think I still have the other frames open. Let's just cancel this. Let's make a new flipbook. I think this should be uh, pretty good now in this case. So, and then the transition will happen and you can see no issues. So how cool is that? Dope, right? So again, this is a far, as far as I cast, but you can see it's still looking looking good. Um, like over here, where it sort of splooshes away quite far, or here, I mean, you're gonna get these sort of sampling errors. But remember, we will also have motion blur because again, this also used the velocity. So we do have the velocity. So stuff like that will also just be motion blurred more because this, uh, like if I put my scatter on here and velocity on here, should uh, see it work. Right, we probably need to change the name with the velocity here. Uh, well, dot star 
how we need to convert PDP. Um, let's have a look why this is not working. Okay, so we have do have an issue here, which we just ran into. So what is the oh that's because like ready have over here. Oop, this needs to be over there. So let's just disable our cache and then try it again. So let's uh so we forgot to, I forgot to link our create velocity in there. So again, this is why you do all these, uh, all these things inside a RD scene. So let's do it like that. And that's, we can remove the convert PDP. Takes a while to build. Okay. Can Put this to and remove this one. Bell dot star. And there we go. So we should probably scatter some more points so we actually capture this entire thing. So we because we want to look at these uh, extra points, right? So let's have a look. Yeah, you can see. It's quite a long trail, so we're gonna get a lot of motion blur in there. And this also looks quite cool. I mean, you could render it like this. So yeah, that's the base effect. Let's continue with uh, now creating our actual production scene. So that's gonna be with the rigid bodies. Uh, so we're gonna start with like uh, making uh, an environment, then we're gonna do the, the rigid bodies, then we're gonna implement that into our pyro simulation, and we're gonna see how we can detail our pyro simulation, um, and lots of other cool stuff. So let's continue to uh, that part of the course with the uh, main effect out of the way. All right, so that concludes the two free chapters of Pyro Fluid here over on YouTube. So I really hope you learned a lot. Uh, I mean, we made a cool pyro explosion, turned it into a flip simulation, uh, then turned it back into a pyro sim into a, into a pyro looking effect. So uh, yeah, I really hope that was useful and that you learned a lot of cool uh, cool tip cool tips and tricks along the way. Um, so make sure to send me any results that you make with this. Like I love seeing all these effects that people do with my uh, with my tutorials. So just like send it over on Instagram or on Twitter or on Facebook or or, or wherever you want. Um, but uh, yeah, I, re I really hope you enjoyed this. Uh, of course, if you wanna learn more, the entire course is is uh, ten ten chapters in total, um, in about thirteen hours, and the link to that is in the is in the description. Um, so in the full thing, we learn, of course, a lot more. So we have a much more detailed pyro explosion, of course, a much more detailed flip simulation. So we're going to go into uh, how to tackle some pro some problems that we, that we run into when, when we're doing that. We're going to build the entire environment. We're going to uh, build rocks. We're going to do rigid body simulations. Uh, we're going to do debris. We're going to do make a shock wave. So we're going to do all of this stuff. And we're going to also composite it. So like the full thing is, is really going to be start to finish this, this entire end shot and just like a, like a real production scene. Uh, so yeah, if like, if you're interested in learning more, like if you, if you liked the parts you saw so far, you can continue watching with the link in the description. It's available to Patreon supporters, but you can also just, just buy it outright. If you prefer that, uh, there will be a discount code in the description for just, uh, the one time purchase thing. If you want to do that, um, so yeah, with, with that out of the way, I really hope you enjoyed what you saw here. If you did, make sure to gently tap the like button. That really helps out the YouTube algorithm. And make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to stay notified whenever I upload new videos. Because I'm working on a lot of cool new stuff. Uh, for example, I'm working on a uh, on a new series, well, on, on, a, on a new course in the Houdini series. So that's going to be quite exciting. So that's going to be there later this year. So if you want to stay up to date with all of the stuff that I put out, uh, yeah, make sure to subscribe. So yeah, without with that out of the way, uh, thanks for watching and hopefully until next time. Thanks guys. Peace.